All right, so the question is asked, how do we add audio uh, inside of Houdini to be able to, you know, edit against or, or, or uh, you know, create against, animate against, whatever. So there's a couple things that we need to do in order to make this work as well as possible. So by default, this is, um, let, let me kind of put these back. Uh, th this is this is how um, uh, Houdini is gonna work, right? So I've already added it, um, but, uh, the when we play, it's going to go ahead and play faster than real time, um, and so we want we want to set that to be correct. So that's this little button right here. The real time toggle will make it so as it plays, it will play it at 24 fps. Uh, if that's what your your settings are, we come here and we see that we have our animation settings, our start and our end, our fps. In this case, I'll make this 24. Uh, I, I like everything to feel more cinematic. When we turn on the real-time playback, we can see here as we enable that and disable that, it is the same as hitting this button. There's two options here. One is maintain real-time playback, possibly skipping frames. The other is play every frame, but never faster than FPS. So what this does is um, if it can't maintain your FPS, your frames per second, it will play slower, but it will always ensure that it's playing every frame. So if you're wanting to see this at 24 frames per second, maybe you have a SIM that's going, you know, or something like that, that, you know, some, something heavy and it doesn't want to process well in real time, you probably want to use this maintain real time playback, possibly skipping uh, frames. Uh, that's typically what I use. So we're going to hit close. Uh, then we're going to click this little si sound guy here. And by default, it comes in at, like this as an off. Uh, we can change this to scrub, uh, real time or test. Honestly, I don't really know <laughs> what the difference is between these two. I haven't played with it enough. I don't usually need to bring in audio. And so this is a little bit of just kind of playing. We have two different options here. We can use a chop, a chop um, node, right, to bring this in. Or we can just point it at a file. The only reason to do this is if you're editing a sound wave to do something, a sound file to do something to make it work. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in directly. So in this case, uh, I've got already gone through and I've got a, an MP3 here. I've actually converted a wave file. So I was actually a little surprised to see that wave files would not come in. It might just be that they're heavier. So MP3s seem to work well. Uh, I don't know other what other sound... Um, uh, well, I guess it's probably going to tell me right down here, isn't it? If we come here and take a look, we can see the different uh, types of sound files that this is, or different files that it's looking for. Oh, that's everything. Never mind. That's just showing you all kinds of stuff. And there's wave right there, which uh, in trying to bring in these waves, I can show you if we bring in the wave file and say accept, uh, you see that the the waveform is gone from inside of the, the play bar down here. Uh, so I've tried... Um, you know, both of these and neither of them come in. And then I did the convert. I used, uh, I used um, VLC media player to do my convert and I'll hit accept. And now we see that. And so now I can come in, I'll uh, go ahead and close this. My audio is enabled. Um, if I hit play, we should be able to hear audio starting to come in um, and play back. Very, very helpful, right? When we scrub, you can hear you can hear those changes, so it's kind of nice. You know, if you're trying to do lip sync or anything like that, uh, I don't know who's character animating inside of Houdini. Uh, if you are, kudos to you. Uh, but it gives you the ability to scrub. Uh, I'd be curious if we come here to real time if if scrubbing still seems to work. I don't really know what the difference is between those. So play and find out. So this is just a quick little walkthrough of how to add audio to your um, your timeline. That way you can uh, you know make sure that you're able to place. And there is on there, if we go back, there is the ability to do some offsets. So if you need to move the frame offset, you know, to slide this back and forth to move the audio to a specific place inside of your, uh, your, your shot, you have that ability right there. Um, uh, and, and that'll help. I have not done anything with this to see, but there you go. You see that's been moved. Uh, let's go back to frame one. You see the you see the waveform sliding back and forth along that. So, well, good luck.